and I push play on this video and no joke, it is my daughter taking her very first steps. And to me, I just kept hearing this thing. It was like, not right or wrong, but are you okay with this? Are you okay with missing this stuff? And um, immediately I was like, no, I am not. So that was the bold move was I quit my job, started this other thing. We luckily we did. Welcome to Be Bold Branding, where we discuss the power of differentiating yourself through your own unique story and standout personal brand. Want to know how to make sustainable and even scalable income without making people feel icky and like they're being sold to? Well, it's called home-based revolution. And today we're talking to the creator. Martha Krejci is a mom first, then a life coach, business growth strategist, and social media marketing powerhouse. You can find her at withmartha.com. She's been featured in Oprah Magazine, Fast Company, Entrepreneur Magazine, just to name a few. And today she's going to share her story with us. Martha, welcome to Be Bold Branding. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. People didn't get to hear the before stuff, but we've already, like we go way back already. So this is fun. That's it. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's always such a small world, much smaller than you think, but we're so excited to have you on today. Yeah, very much so. You know, on your website, you have a quote. If you're not living your best life right now, it's time to flip the switch. So what was the turning point that caused you to flip the switch in your own life? And what bold move did you make as a result of that? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is where people have panic attacks as I'm talking. So if you need to take <laughs> something, go ahead and take something or grab a pillow, whatever's going to self-soothe you. So as I... <laughs> I was going through the, the typical, you know, climbing the corporate ladder. Uh, I worked at GoDaddy for a little over five years and I love that company. And I was moving into, well, I was in leadership and I was just kind of moving up the ladder and doing what, uh, you know, you, you're supposed to do like this, this whole grand narrative of you do this and then you do that. And I was following that narrative because quite frankly, I didn't know any better. Uh, I had gone to a semester of college and that's how I knew I didn't want to go to college. And so I didn't have anything like educationally under my belt. And I thought that was kind of my only shot that I was going to be successful. And so I stuck with it. So I was sitting in my carpeted cubicle, smelled like the 60s. I think we're all familiar with it. It had like my, oh, yeah. my, little, my little sayings that got me through the day, picture of my family, had the computer in front of me and everything. And, and then I get um, a video from my husband, which is totally weird. He wouldn't usually even be messaging me at work because he knows I can't really look at my phone. But then he sent a video and you see the thumbnail of the video and it was my daughter on her feet. And I was like, I immediately, like, there was this gulp of, oh my gosh, I just missed something. And I pushed play on this video, and no joke, it is my daughter taking her very first clompy, somewhat pigeon toed, <laughs> little bit confident, a little bit like, oh my gosh, steps. So I had this moment of like extreme pride in her. And just like, oh, my girl is walking. And then in the very next second, it went into like, poof, here's your life, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're just watching her. She doesn't even know you're watching her. She cannot see you. She doesn't, she can't emote from how you're emoting. You know how like kids sort of like ma uh, mirror or match our face mm -hmm. um, because they're always learning from us. And like she wasn't getting any of that from me. And to me, I just kept hearing this thing. It was like, not right or wrong, but are you okay with this? Are you okay with missing this stuff? And um, immediately I was like, no, I am not. And I've never felt like more of a caged animal in my life. It mm -hmm. was like, it was a cellular, like, you got to go. That's, this isn't happening. And so I started, I started organizing my thoughts and thinking, okay, I'm leaving here. And how do I make that happen? And I quit my job that night, but here's how that happened. I went home. So I started, I started thinking, okay, well, what am I going to do? So solution oriented. Okay. Well, what can I do to make money? Cause there won't be money coming in. Right. And I'm really good. Like I have a weird understanding of SEO. 
or search engine optimization or how you move mm -hmm. websites to the top of the search engines. I know a Google algorithm changed before they even mentioned the change happened. It's weird. I just see it. And, uh, and so I was like, well, I could do SEO because nobody knows how to do it. And so, um, as I was driving home, I was like, okay, well, I'll just start an SEO agency, which every entrepreneur knows that you're like, oh, it'll be so easy. Right. And, <laughs> and you're like quickly, like, it's not really that easy. So as I was driving home, I thought of all the things that I was going to say, I get home, I grab my purse and my keys. I go up the stairs. He is sitting at the kitchen counter. I set down my purse and my keys and I take a deep breath. And I was like, I'm going to quit my job. And I told him what I was going to do quickly because I was like, okay, solution. Here's the solution. Here's how we're going to do that. And the weirdest thing ever happened. He looked at me and he said, Martha, if you don't do this, you're not only doing yourself, but everyone else around you a disservice. That's wow. awesome. I was like, who is that? Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, what'd you do with my husband? <laughs> what is right. coming out of your face right now? <laughs> and that's, that's how I knew I had to do it because there are moments that happen like that where you're like, yep. you just know God's talking for someone yep. because that's not, so true. he's, he was supposed to be on the floor, you know, like mm -hmm. he, he was supposed to be a complete wreck. That would be all history would say that he would be like, Oh my gosh, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. But for him to say that so confidently, it was like, that's, so that was the bold move was I quit my job started this other thing we luckily we didn't skip a beat uh financially i the very first month was making what i was making at the other gig but that's that was the bold move that is absolutely a bold move yes it is yes it is <laughs> yeah you know i found something pretty interesting though so one of the things that you have mentioned on your website is that during your turning point you know uh, your why was greater than your fears. And I know a lot of people listening to you right now, when you say, grab the pillow, get however you self soothe, right? <laughs> because a lot of people want to cry when they hear that story because they've been there themselves. Yeah. And what is your advice to them if they can't figure out that why? So let's just say you're in the cubicle, you're stuck. Yeah. You realize that this isn't working for me. How do you figure out what your why is like your why for not wanting to be there strong, but your yeah. why do I move out and do this instead might be still hidden. Mm, I love this. So I call this bat signal, which I'm pretty sure is copywritten somewhere, trademarked, whatever. Um, but what, what I like to think about and especially as women, but I think this is the same with men too. I'm just not a man, so I don't know, but for us women, especially, it's important for our why to be external and to be in service to somebody and mm -hmm. typically communi community creating uh, because that's, it's kind of like, it's one of those special things that we're just very, very good at. Mm -hmm. And I really think if the world as a whole, if we could come back to what that looks like, man, we could really change some things, but mm -hmm. what it's bat signal is what I call it. And really I have people like write, on a piece of paper, so like if they have a, a notepad, I have them turn it sideways. We make a line from left to right on the whole sheet, put an arrow at the end of the line. The line represents our life so far. The arrow represents the fact that it ain't over yet. And then what I have people do is we put hash marks on the line for every time that we felt like our back was against the wall for every time that we felt like, man, if I just knew someone that could just walk me through this, that could just show me what is true here, what is false here and the right way to go. And so a lot of us, we've had many of those moments and sometimes it takes people a bit. I tell them not to take longer than an hour on the exercise because now you're just exercising paralysis and you need to, you'll, you'll get it out. You'll get out what you need to get out within an hour, but you choose one of those times. And then you decide that that is the person that you're going to serve. So the community of those people is who you're going to serve. And so when we live in service and when we live to make someone else's life better and easier and more fulfilling, that's the, that's as big of a why as we need in order mm -hmm. to move. 
when we know confidently we, that we can do that, because here's the deal is if we were in that space, then we already did a ton of research to get out of that space. Mm-hmm. We've already made it. We, we know what we know, but we discount what we know all the time. Because sure. we're like, well, I know that. So everybody knows that. Well, that's not true. <laughs> or else people would stop Googling it, you know? So <laughs> we all just need to show up in front of our people and serve them and help them and confidently do so. So whenever you're, whenever your why is about helping people and you're very specific about who you're helping, just helping people isn't a big enough why because it doesn't hit you at your core. Like when, when it's something you literally went through, you know what it feels like to live inside of tragedy. You know what it feels like to live inside of just maybe despair. And it doesn't always have to be negative, but stress and anxiety, like it could just be that stuff, but you know what that's like. So to help somebody else out of that is easy. And and I'll 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 add to that. Uh, I'll add to that too, Martha, because you just hit on, you know, the reason that brand face exists today. You know, years and years ago, I grew up in an amazing family and amazing small town in, in North Georgia. And however, I was, my family was riddled with alcoholism and addiction, both sides of my family. So it was tragedy all the time. It was always some sort of, you know, trauma, something going on. And I realized at a pretty young age that sometimes the only difference in somebody waiting for the next drug deal and somebody going off to college with a bright future is self-worth. It was getting them to see that there's something very unique, very special about them. And if we could unveil that inner star, then a lot of their future path would change. And so that's really why we exist today. And I, you know, like that really made sense to me when you talked about that, you, you've got to figure out, it's not just enough to have people you want to help. And I think that's a good takeaway from today already. It's not enough to just want to help somebody why do you want to help them? Your why has to be bigger than your fear. And I love where you're coming from with that. Yeah. It, it's very good stuff. Mm-hmm. Very good. stuff. I remember, I remember sitting uh, one time um, in, uh, I, I was in Cancun, Mexico, and I had gone to a buddy's wedding. I actually officiated the wedding for, for them, great friends to this day. And uh, I remember sitting, having lunch, and I was leaving later on that afternoon. And I, it was almost like this voice came to me, and I, it was just a gorgeous day, sitting over the water and everything. And, and, and like, it's almost this voice in my head, and, and it said, but it wasn't my voice, and it's, but it said, think of all the things that you, all like you said, back against the wall. But this, this said to me that all the times you thought you couldn't live through something or all the nights that you thought just went on forever. And now look at where you're having lunch. And it was like this revelation to me that the blessing is always going to be greater than the curse. Absolutely. Right. And so from then on, every time I was faced with a curse, I was just like, well, bring it on. Like, you know, before that, I would be like, how much worse can it get? Don't ever say that because it's dang sure <laughs> going to get worse. Right. Don't say that. Don't say that. But you can say, hey, the worse it gets, the better it gets. Right. Yeah. And so I, that was a turning point for me a- along with this. I never thought about, OK, in service to others, look at what you've gone through. And because that like you just said that just to say, hey, I want to help somebody. We all want to help somebody. We really I'm in a real estate business. And the first thing you ask anybody, why are you in it? They say, I want to help people. OK, but what does that mean? You know what I mean? Why? Like, is that enough? And you just nailed it. You said it's not enough to just want to help people. But if you choose one of those hash marks where you've been through it, And it was poignant to you and your back was against the wall. Now, you know, something to help them. And that's, that's powerful. So yeah, two takeaways there, Martha, fantastic stuff. Yeah. And because we work with people that want to escape the nine to five grind, right? They, they don't want to be beholden to this corporate thing anymore, right? We've all been punished by the corporations. You know, we've had presidents in the past United States that said no corporation should be bigger than the federal government that it, that, right? Name the ones that are bigger now. Right. Name the Amazons, name the Apples, name the Facebooks that are bigger than the government that's supposed to be helping the little guy to be protected from this kind of information and stuff. And then think of all those people that started a carpeted cubicle and it worked their way up to this giant, you know, whatever. And they hit glass ceilings or they hit this problem or that problem or then. 
they don't they get fired they get they pour their life into it and then they're like oh you're too old or you're too this or you're too that and it happens every day and we live in the land of opportunity everything is possible in america still to this day as long as we believe um you know so what piece of advice would you give to people about quitting their jobs and following that dream right you know yeah. this, this yes. is a question based on your guide but yeah well that's this is the guide is, uh, we could talk about that in a second, but this is, uh, in quitting your job, like, <clears throat> first of all, we have to, I, I have so much wants to come out of my face right now. It's like, <laughs> I have to slow it all down. It's like, I have so much. But first thing that we need to think about as you're wanting to quit your job is you need to believe that it's a realistic endeavor. You need to understand that there are, lots of people living outside the corporate world mm -hmm. and the mass narrative that you hear, first of all, turn off your TV, please. But if your TV is still on, understand that that's a story and that's a story that they need for you to believe. And if you believe that story, you are beholden to them because you're scared to death. But the moment that you stop believing that story, open up a journal and start writing your own instead, then all of a sudden, the world literally opens up to you because there are those of us that are creating, like I, I create income online, right? And so mm -hmm. there are plenty of us that are doing this and doing it with wild success. Like we're talking multiple billion dollar industry in the info industry, in the education, you know, and, and if you're thinking like, oh, well, I can't do education or information. We went, we just literally went through something that you know how to teach people. And so that's where the worth comes in and the confidence comes in. You went through it. A lot of people come to me and they say, here, I'm just going to sidetrack for a second. But a lot of people come to me and they say, well, I'm not certified in X, Y, and Z. So how do I teach? Listen, that's again, a narrative thing. You, only, right. you don't need to be certified in Jack unless you're doing like brain surgery or something. I would like to see credentials. But <laughs> if you're just teaching me how to do something, then you don't need to be certified. Your life certified you already. Right. The You've fact done that it. Your results certified you. Yep. And so let's stop thinking that somebody else needs to give us an okay to go do a thing that then kicks back against this narrative that they need very much for us to buy into. And so that's why there's so much money in, in, in the marketing of the narrative. And I'm going to say the marketing of the narrative because the news is bought and sold. So point one, you have to believe that it's possible for you. And it is. And if you didn't just hear me talk, rewind, it's possible for you. After that, all you have to do is is document, okay, how'd you do the thing? Create content around that. And then you're able to start creating that income. Now, do I say that people should, and there's, you could just search my YouTube stuff all the live long day to find out how to do all of that, by the way. But what I want you guys to do is I want you to be creating this content, but then also you don't need to jump out the window like I did, figuratively. I was crazy. But also it was an extreme circumstance for me. And I knew I needed to do that because if you don't have a safety net, then you won't use it. But if you have a safety net, nine times out of 10 is you'll use it. Truth. It's something to sit and think about, right? Like, because mm -hmm. if you give yourself something to like a plan B, so to speak, um, then you're going to use plan B. You're going to be like, what's the path of least resistance? Because you're a human being and that's what happens. But if we don't give ourselves a safety net, then you have to make it work. There's no other choice. Mm -hmm. And so then all of a sudden things work. But anyway, if you're not that person, because not everybody, sometimes people have, you know, a lot of folks relying on them and they're just not ready to do that. That doesn't mean that you can't accomplish this goal. My suggestion would be start you know, learn your hash mark. Who is your hash mark? Start, you know, going through and saying uh, methodically, okay, this is the first thing they would need to do. Second thing they would need to do. Third thing, get really like live and own your material. 
and then start creating content. And when you get to a point where the money that you're making from your business is the same money as what you're making from your job, then you can, you know, kick the job out and mm -hmm. you can do them both. Like what, you know, sure. about like five hours a week. It doesn't take that long to do this. It's just doing it. Yeah. That's the yeah. thing. That is so much the thing. Just do it. Like you, you gotta have the dream. The dream is good. The dream, you know, like what, what a uh, Travis Smithers, uh, he's got a song and he says, you know, what isn't real is genuine illusion. Yes. Right. And so they, it's create your own illusion and you can do that, but you have to do it. You know, you don't, you can't just say it. You can't just dream it. You gotta go take steps forward. But like you said, you don't have to like, literally bail out of a window and say, you know what? Yeah, I'm out of here. I can't stand you people. You never empty the trash. Jerry McGuire taking right? the fish. Yeah. yeah. Who's going with me? <laughs> I got the fish bowl. I got the fish with me. Who's going? <laughs> well, I remember um, there were, there have been three times in my life when uh, you said, you know, jump out of the window figuratively, right? I, I always call it jumping off a cliff without your clothes and hoping to find them on the way down. <laughs> Yeah, and I've done it three times, and luckily, I like to say I have landed fully clothed. Been dressed every time. <laughs> Lucky for everybody, right? Yeah. <laughs> but that's the way it feels sometimes. It felt that way the first time, the second time, the third time. But I had more confidence each time that mm. oh, I know how this is going to end. It's just like okay, what shirt will I be wearing, right? But. But it's I like winning battles and the more battles you win, the more you realize the battles right. you can win. When I, I had a chance to be an engineer out of high school and they were going to pay for my college. And all I had to do was commit to work for them the same amount of years as they paid for my college. Electrical engineers, we built conveyor belts, things like that. Loved the job, actually. It was fantastic. It was not what I wanted to do. It wasn't my life's passion. I didn't want to be an engineer. I wanted to be an auctioneer. And my mom cried. She's like, oh, I don't know how you're going to eat. It's not, you don't know where your paycheck's going to come from and stuff. But I it, I was lucky because I was young at that given time. But I, I fashioned in my mind, I'm like, I don't care if I make $10,000 a year, I'm going to do what I want to do for a living the rest of my life. I don't care about the money. Yeah. The money will follow. I'm going to do what I want to do. Yes. And and if you're an older person listening to this, that like, like Martha's talking about, and you've got that, you know, oh, I got, look, I do have responsibilities. I do have five kids. I do have, you know, my in-laws. I do have to have the insurance for a minute. Like you can, if you're still passionate about it, you can do this. You could just start doing it. And then when you get it to that size that you're comfortable with it, then you bail. Then you, there's other ways to do it, it but you've got to do it. Yeah. That's, and I, I even will take it a step further and I'll say it's our responsibility to do it. And I like that. That's because, I mean, I know that I'm an example. I have, a, she's seven now. My little walker is seven now. Uh, I know that she's watching me and I know that she, she looks to me to understand from a psychological perspective. I know that she looks to me to understand what is available for her and that's another thing to sit on as a parent, as a grandparent, our kids can only do typically, unless they're outliers, but typically our kids are only going to do what they've seen. Yeah. And so are we proud mm -hmm. of what they're seeing? And do we, I, I want for my ceiling to be Nora's floor. I want for mm -hmm. everything Love. that I've done for her to build on top of it into her own thing and what that looks like. And I think for us to really be able to, I mean, our world is an interesting place these days. And I think for us to really be able to take control of what's going on in the world uh, and to change things, I, it's going to require our kids understanding um, their own liberties. Understand I like their that own a lot. It's other motivating factors that would would drive you to reach for that. I I like the idea of the responsibility too, because I think that we all have a part of the tapestry that we're supposed to complete, and I and I think that we we should be striving to do that uh and and living the best you know we we at Ramface, uh tanya had this guy email us one time and he's like hey can you make me a star and she re immediately hit back without thinking it's just straight from the heart we don't make stars we unveil them and there's wow. one in everybody yeah. and we Absolutely. firmly believe that and so if we can help them find it that's that is our calling and our purpose because they have a personal dream that they're supposed to do that really affects everybody else around them achieving their personal dream, just like what you just said, and especially with our children. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So 
Uh, Martha, you are a total open book and you're like beautiful inside and out. And I love your message. Uh, and I know you, you know, you, there's probably not a lot you wouldn't share with us, but here's a, here's a good question for you. What would people be surprised to learn about you? There's two things. One is funny and one isn't. Um, I'll say the one that isn't funny first <laughs> and okay. then we'll, we'll, we'll clean the palette with the other one. But, uh, the one that isn't funny is that I used to be a uh, raging alcoholic. I had a very, very bad problem with alcoholism. It almost ended my marriage. Um, and uh, it did not serve me at all. I have no problem with people that drink or even being around alcohol these days. But it, I was not a good person in that space. And so um, I, I, my husband is an absolute angel. He didn't have a problem with alcohol, but he quit with me so I could quit. And, uh, he hasn't drank as long as I haven't. And, um, it's just, it, that was something that it could have taken my life. It definitely, I, I stopped drinking before all of this started. Right. So like it, I don't, I wouldn't be where I am right now if I had, if I still were having that issue. So, um, when you talked about your family, I'm like, yeah, I get that. I know that from mm -hmm. the inside part. Yeah. Congratulations, um, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's good stuff. Good stuff over here, but, uh, or on this side of it. Um, now the thing to clean the palate is I, I think I was 10 years old. I won the County fairs greased pig contest and it wasn't <laughs> just, there were a lot of kids there. It wasn't just that I won it. It was that I ran down, grabbed my pig. If anybody's been to a grease pig contest, it looks like this. You got a bunch of kids on one. It's the um, like a what a ring, whatever. Um, you you've got a bunch of kids on one side ready to go. There's a bunch of grease pigs at the other end, and you run, and then you grab a pig, and the pig has to come back. Like you have to bring it back to the other end of the line. And then you get to keep the pig or you get money for the pig. You get your choice. Anyway, I ran. This is my first grease pig contest. I ran and grabbed the pig. And the pig, no joke. My mom was proud of this to this day. My mom has dementia and still remembers this. <laughs> and she's like, Martha, people were cheering for you. That pig was walking with you. He wanted to be with you. And so like I had his legs and he, we were just both walking back. Like it was no, he wasn't trying to run away. He wasn't squealing. He wasn't nothing. And, uh, and I liked him very much. He rode home with me in the backseat of our Corsica <laughs> and <laughs> I grew up on a farm. So he just went to the farm with me. But uh, yeah, so that was, that's another thing. Not a lot of people know. Okay. I That's have, fantastic. I have one follow-up question. You mentioned it was your first grease pig contest. Were there others? That there weren't. There okay. weren't other ones. I had to know. It was I mean, now I want to. I don't know if they let adults do that. Um, I feel like they should. I'm uh, so in on that. You know? Yeah. I would do it with you. There there's I, a couple of apple farms here in uh in north georgia that have the races i don't think they let, grease them up and let them catch them anymore but they uh they have the pig races so you they're a sight to behold in and of themselves so i love it <laughs> i love it hey okay. what is something we should ask you about yourself that we haven't i think maybe a good question would be did everything just work out whenever I, whenever I started things. So when, whenever I, and I'll answer it. <laughs> um, whenever I uh, started, I started with an SEO agency and I, um, to, in, in order to make money with the agency, I, or to market for the agency, I guess, I joined the local chamber of commerce and I just started doing some trainings. And while there were only, you know, seven people or so at the trainings, every single one of them did like a freaking table rush at the end because I was showing them how to do SEO, but then they didn't want to do it themselves. So they, right. I was the natural, obvious choice to hire to do that. And that's uh, so if anybody's got any like professional services that they're thinking of doing the chamber of commerce, typically like 200 bucks a year, not bad. It's tax write off. And then uh, and you're in, welcome to the wonderful world of tax write offs also. Mm -hmm. But um, also another thing, like I'm just going to draw, I'm just going to do some gold nuggets here. Another thing is you don't need an office unless you need an office. Like I thought I needed an office for my SEO agency and I did not. Right. I just needed to go meet people at their office or at the coffee shop or whatever. I did not need to spend two grand a month 
on a stinking office that then I had to go to. Like, I didn't even want to go yeah. anywhere. I'd rather be in my pajamas doing my work. But I've been um, there and done that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Isn't it crazy the stuff you think you need to do? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so there's that. And then, uh, yeah, so join the chamber, do some trainings for people. They'll and they'll hire you on the spot, probably, if, if you do the training well. And then um, from there, what I determined is that my SEO agency was kind of like just another job. Uh, it, I was tethered to people the same exact way. I, I came down to Disney World. Uh, my daughter was three at that point. We came down to Disney World. First time I had ever been to Disney World. Holler. Um, now we go every week. But uh, we had come down. And I remember clients just kept flipping emailing me and messaging me while I was at Disney World. And I'm like, this, which I don't know about you guys, but I get anxious when there's stuff that isn't done. And so oh, I'm yeah. at Disney World and they're like, we need this, this, and this. And I'm like, I can't do that. I'm not at a computer. I'm on vacation. Like, stop talking to me. But um, anyway, so eventually I just ended up getting rid of the, um, the agency and I started just teaching people how to do the stuff that I knew how to do. And so that's, that's where I'm at. And that's, that's where I found actual freedom for myself anyway. I don't know if it's the same way for other people, but for me, it's, it's where I found freedom. Well, it's super good advice. And I want to tell you why I think it's good advice. I when I, I have agents uh, in my real estate firm come to me all the time and they're like, how can I grow as a real estate agent? And I'm like, think a little bit smaller than you've been doing. And what I love about it is you you started at a chamber of commerce. You started where people were right. You, you, you were fishing where the fish were. You weren't just out there pounding the water just because, you know, you had a hook and a pole and like, there they are. So I'm going to them. Right. But you did it in a brick in, in a brick and mortar establishment and started it. And then you parlayed one client, seven clients and a, a dozen clients and hundreds of clients and thousands of clients and tens of thousands of clients. Right. And so that's so important. I think that grounding of starting like that, I think that people, especially in the internet world, it is very hard for them to grasp how huge this ocean is. And then they, they think, oh, well, I got to get in here. I'm going to open up this, you know, internet based or whatever. And then, oh my God, I don't have a half a million followers. I don't have this right here, but you, you just gave the formula. So that's a takeaway. I want the listeners to hear, right? Yes. Hopefully you have that kind of success that Martha's had, but she started right there with seven clients at, you know, at the Chamber of Commerce that needed their service. And then she she learned, she tweaked, she moved it, she changed it, got rid of those old, dispelled those old myths that, you know, I got to have an office, I got to have this, got to have that. And now she serves hundreds of thousands of people versus that seven, you know, from the comfort of her home. So that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Martha, the time has come and we couldn't be more sad. So. Yeah, we could stay on forever. <laughs> like if we didn't have another one coming up, we'd just be like, hey, let's make this a five let's hour. Double down, right? right? <laughs> yeah. Well, we think you're amazing. And thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us and to share some great bits of wisdom. Oh, man. Thank you. This has been really, really great, especially for my Monday. I get to start off my week like this. Uh, we do too. And we feel the same. So, all right. A, a quick reminder to hit that subscribe button guys for more personal branding content and amazing guests, just like Martha. And hopefully we'll be lucky enough to have her back again. So hit that subscribe. button. That's it guys. Hey, listen, prosperity favors the bold. So be bold like Martha, especially with your brand. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, Ms. Todd. Brought to you by brand face the only comprehensive personal brand building system across the globe.